Nat Brown here. Decent ball in, instead it's 2 0. What a glorious goal! Magnificent goal, and Nat Brown played his part in that. But how cute and how calm was the finish from Johnstead? Brown was pulling Doncaster apart, he laid over the ball and there was plenty of pace on it, Stead had a lot to do there, but how calmly did the 20 year old take that one? The Doncaster game, your enthusiasm was there for all to see um, and has been throughout the season. Yeah, mm. <laughs> you mean the slip, that's what you mean, that enthusiasm, <laughs> try to make me look stupid, don't you? <laughs> fans have said it, that it's nice and refreshing, especially after the last two or three years, to see a manager who obviously shows his passion during the game. Is that something that you're conscious of, or is it just you? No, I'm not conscious of it. I, I don't do it in f for the fans or for the camera. He said it, it's a case that I, get, I really do get carried away, and uh, with the excitement, the adrenaline, and, and I simply want to do well for myself, I want to do well for the football club. And uh, you know, people comment on reactions to goals and, and certain incidents in games, but it, it's just a genuine passion for the football club. It's, it's good when you, you see your manager jump up and down at the side. He, he does it. It's contagious, really. It, it rubs off on everybody. It's got through to McIndoe and that was a mistake by Holdsworth, it's let McIndoe in, can he find somebody in there in the red shirt? Yes he can, and Doncaster Rovers are back in it, they've got a goal. It was a mistake by young Andy Holdsworth there, he missed the ball, McIndoe was on his way, perfect cross from McIndoe and Blundell couldn't miss. The square ball is on for Ryan, who will uh, sling it up there. And then it's headed down into the danger area, Blundell touches it back, Fortune West swings and volleys over. It looked to me as though Fortune West had hooked the shot over all by himself without any uh, help. But not so, says the referee. Leo Fortune West might just have used his elbow there. Uh, involved with Nathan Clark, corner Doncaster. And another brilliant save by Senior, save of the day without doubt. The header from the centre back against um, Doncaster down at McAlpine was a, was a big save for me because um, I think Cam got scored. I think if they'd have scored that, I think they had a chance of getting back into the game. Um, I think any save really in the last last nine minutes or you know last ten minutes are, are crucial saves really. Worthington didn't have much time, but Stead will swivel here. Can he get the shot away? It's Stead. He's done it so many, many times. It's 3 1. Huddersfield Town may have just clinched it. Worthington prods the ball through beneath Warrington, and Huddersfield Town have their third of the day. And the man who's just hugging him there, Stead, certainly played his part in that. Huddersfield Town 3, Doncaster Rovers 1. That may be good enough. the pulsating Yorkshire derby and uh, Huddersfield's promotion aspirations are being bolstered by their excellent home form. Unbeaten in 11 here at the McAlpine Stadium now. They have a sniff of the playoffs certainly and Doncaster River shouldn't be too perturbed about losing successive games by the same scoreline 3-1. They did enough to suggest that they can still be up there too come the end of the season. Jonathan Stead's days with town may have been numbered, but his goals had helped keep the club right in the playoff hunt. He was on the score sheet for the last time the following weekend in a 2-1 win at Cambridge.
Cambridge's consolation came too late to affect the result. The next home match against Boston ended in a 2-0 win. It was notable for Effie Sodgy's first goal in town colours. I was playing against uh, Stuart Douglas, uh, he was a teammate of mine down at Luton and we were talking before the game, we rang off each other and everything and I, said, I did tell him, I said, I said uh, I'm going to be marking you today and it was on that day and he was laughing his head off and I said to him, I said, well, there's one thing I'm going to do, I'll mark you out again and I'm definitely going to score and he was like, there's no way he's going to do that and they, they battled us, you know, they gave us a good fight for him but I had to score and that was it. This was also Jonathan Stead's last game in the blue and white stripes. He marked it with a goal-scoring pass to another first-time scorer, Anthony Lloyd. A niggling hamstring injury kept Stead out of the Sunday afternoon game at York, a match which, thanks to goalkeeping heroics at both ends of the pitch, looked like finishing in stalemate. We knew what we were going to tackle out of fans and, um, they, you know, they were quite nice then behind the goal and it wasn't important because um, it was such a late on in game. I think they were only one way for, it, for him to hit it really, so I've gambled and he's gone for it and just managed to get a good hand on it and turn it around post. With time running out, the manager made a surprising substitution. Five minutes ago and I send David Murphy on some fans I send, oh Jackson's going for a draw. Surprised everybody by putting Murphy up front because Jerry Murphy has said he can play as a striker. We played well, but it just looked like it was going to be a nil-nil. Then the manager sent on, on, on young Murphy and I can hardly understand and we thought he must have been playing another centre half, make sure he gets a nil-nil. When that close came at York I thought, I've, I've really got nothing to prove because I'm, I'm a centre half and, I, and he just said just, just work hard. I can remember him going on that run down the left, hitting the shot, a bit weak the first one and the keeper spilled it and Danish put it in. But then the second one is, just shows how quick he is. He didn't look as though he's moving, but the lad just, he just cruised past everybody and he just thought he'd been playing up front all, all his career, really. People were saying, fantastic substitution, Jacko. And that was certainly, I think we had three and a half thousand fans there that day. And I think if York had got a result like they'll beat us, they could have been in a top eight, something like that. And that was a decline of York City. But that proved to us we're on a march. Yes, a sixth successive win had taken town up to fifth in the table, but from now on they would have to cope without their talisman John Stead. As the transfer window closed, town finally accepted a bid of £1.3 million from Premiership Club Blackburn Rovers. I always said that, you know, after a month here, um, that we probably had one of the best young talents outside the Premiership and uh, it proved to be right. You know, Steady's got 18 goals for us, and I think playing up front with Andy Booth brought him on a lot. It does help with playing with some experienced players as well, to, to bring him along a bit, but he's got, he's got, he's, he's got it. You could tell he was going to go far because uh, after training, he was staying behind for at least half an hour, just smashing balls into the nets, and without a goalkeeper, and he was just doing everything. And he was, he's a young lad, he's got everything that a striker needs. We had a situation, obviously, in October where we, we, we turned down 800,000 from Sunderland. 